Wednesday War College, just remember Kyle Clement, we're talking about this uh, incredible lore that goes back all the way to the time of Christ, where there was, uh, uh, I don't, I don't want to miss, uh, I don't want to misquote you, Kyle. You said there was nine Roman soldiers that did what? So there were nine soldiers, specific soldiers that were involved in the scourging and the crucifixion uh, of the Lord. And so there are parts uh, that have been maintained in Satanism where this ritual is, is gone through. And so there are parts to be said, responses. There's a false liturgy or there is a liturgy, their liturgy, that is built up around the crucifixion of Christ. And so with the driving of the nail in the right hand is a, um, a series of statements about the hand that healed uh, the leper is now crucified, is now, I mean, it was... It, it you can imagine what it would be written by Satanist under the inspiration of the devil. Wow. It's horrible. Here's here's the point. We heard in the late uh, 90s and in the 2000s. This predates my working with Father Ripperger. Is we heard the same rituals coming from uh, people in Mexico, in Canada, in the United States, from. Um, Italy. So this was not, and these are people that are not traveled. They're not knowing. And so this is the value of experience. This is one of the, the things is this ministry with Father Ripperger and prior to, there's a, there's a large number of cases. And so what happens in experience is you listen for, and you look for the patterns. What are they saying the same? This is how you always test the truth. So there's some young men out there, young men who have never been hit in the face, never (laughs) bled, who are wanting to opine about spiritual warfare. And quite frankly, I'm going to listen to the knee at the knee of a grizzled gladiator about what hand to hand combat is rather than some guy with a pretty face who's never been hit. And and he's going to tell me this. So you and I have talked about this experience is built upon wisdom is built. Wisdom is knowledge with a bruise. Wisdom and, and experience, you're looking for, for patterns. And I'm not saying I'm wise. I'm not saying that at all. I am saying I'm experienced in listening to and being present to these cases, watching the patterns, looking for the commonalities. And if multiple cases are telling the exact same thing, then you got to pay attention to, okay, this is an accepted rite or ritual among Satanism worldwide, or this is a common universal principle, or this may be unique to this particular region, but the concept is the same. If you follow what I'm saying, yes, Kyle. So these these uh these Satanists throughout the centuries, they've come up with their own what their own like prayers, their own paraliturgy, uh, using these uh these uh the actions of these nine soldiers, in in the action of the crucifixion and scourging of our Lord. Have they come up with with like some type of a paraliturgy? based on this tradition? Correct. Correct. So devotion, so for instance, the devotion to the sacred heart, um, or for even going even more recent, the devotion to the divine mercy. When you read that and you read Faustina's diary, and then you go back to Margaret Mary Alacoque, because it refers back and there's a commonality between what Margaret Mary Alacoque was experiencing and saying, and what Faustina was experiencing Correct. and saying. Yep. So yep. what you, what you've got to surmise is, all right, that's the same Holy Spirit speaking in a woman religious of a mature age about this subject. Yeah. Yeah, that's my deduction as well, right? So, uh, so you got multiple. Go ahead, go ahead. Kyle. <laughs> well, you've got multiple examples of this. And so on the other side, when, when uh, diabolical entities inspire, they do it consistently. Each one of these entities has its own personality. And when Father Ripperger is telling you what he's telling you about learning and exorcism, these are not things that are unique to him. He verifies and talks with other exorcists, goes back, reads the material, looks at what are the commonalities that come through, and then what are the variants? Um, what falls within the norm and what doesn't? Every discipline does this. It, this is called experience. Part of the modernist relativist millennial mistake and error is to discard all the generational wisdom, to discard the tradition, to discard all of this stuff as if they are the original interpreter, arbiter, 
and judge of what is good, what is clean and what is unclean. And, and that's a big point of psychological compatibility with the demon. The demon wants you to think you are the guy who knows because you're making a determination of how you want things to be. Um, and that just doesn't bear out. You've got to look at it with no attachment, no uh, agenda and say, okay, what am I seeing? What are the common denominators? What are the universal principles? And what are the variants? What are the outliers? What are the deviants? Kyle, how does this affect it? Okay, so the Satanists are doing this uh, this paraliturgy based on these the the uh, horrendous treatment of our Lord by these nine Roman soldiers. How do the do, does this spill in to the Catholic Church, or how does how, how has it affected maybe Catholic bishops or cardinals? Uh, how are they caught up in this? Okay, so what would be the effect of a high pontifical mass with multiple cardinals and bishops attending? What is the effect of that? Uh, well, obviously, uh, a, a very uh, powerful release of sanctifying grace upon the body of Christ. Exactly. Exactly. And so grace flows through those offices, and it either flows through those offices or it does not flow through those offices. So every time a Holy Father is sitting in a neo-pagan building alongside the Vatican that's shaped like a serpent and pontificating on, literally pontificating on, we've got to reach out to everyone and writing vague encyclicals, that is not conveying grace. So, okay, so, so you, you would say that we have... A do we have our equivalent of maybe nine Roman soldiers right now that are betraying Christ that are in, uh, in, uh, in robes in priest robes? So that is the conjecture and, um, that is the conjecture and, and that it's all those offices have always been filled. Um, I mean, we understand what's being uncovered at the NAC. We understand what's being uncovered at all of these places and, and they're ongoing. They have been ongoing. The thing is, is watch what's happening is we're not, uh, again, diabolical signature is there's no, there's no justice. The, the good are persecuted and the, um, the despicable, the, the evil go free. In no universe may one square the actions of Rome of endorsing Martin and suspending Bishop Strickland. You can't square that in any universe. Right. Yeah. So my point is I've got no dog in the fight other than to just watch is and to say, I see what I see. This if there was a superhero for this ministry, it would be Captain Obvious. He'd have a big O on his chest, Captain Obvious. This is, uh, this is the guy who says the emperor has no clothes. Yeah. I see what I see. You're, yeah. This is why men have been alienated from the Catholic Church is we see what we see. Walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, swims like a duck. It's a duck till you prove to me it's not a duck. Yeah, no, uh, well, Kyle, we, we, there's there's actually pretty well documented cases of of some uh, people in high positions that have been Satanists. I mean, one that comes off the top of my head was uh, Cardinal Bernardine. This is well documented uh, in in in, uh, in in many of the many of the uh, journalists, the trusted sources that he was involved in black masses, and I I, I don't think. Again, I don't think this has ceased with uh, Cardinal Bernardine. I'm sure it's happened before him. I'm sure it's happened way after him as well. And so, uh, absolutely, without a doubt, yeah, the, the the spirit of these nine Roman soldiers, it lives on in some of the clergy. I, I can see that. 